Erev Tov, I'm Stephen Ben Danoon, and you are watching Israeli News Live. Today, as earlier reported, a ceasefire, long-term ceasefire fire deal with Hamas uh, has been agreed upon by both parties, as well as the United Nations and the United States as well, agreeing with the ceasefire terms and conditions. Uh, in fact, in an article here today in Israel's National News, says Gaza ceasefire, what did Israel actually agree to? Let's take a look at this. Azam al-Hamid, head of the Palestinian Authority delegation in the Cairo Truce Talks, re excuse me, revealed to the AFP on Tuesday night what exactly was in the long-term ceasefire deal that Israel agreed to and which went into effect at 7 p.m. that night. So we're actually already into the ceasefire agreement. Uh, the first point raised was Gaza border crossings. Under the agreement, there will be a, an immediate uh, easing of restrictions of the two main crossings between Israel and Gaza and to allow in aid and reconstruction supplies. Uh, significant construction materials needed to repair the waters Water network, electricity grid, and mobile phone networks will be allowed in, uh, in along with humanitarian aid, food, and medical supplies. It should be noted uh, that Israel continued supplying humanitarian goods throughout most of the operation of Protective Edge in the first place. Uh, construction materials have, in the past, been used to build terror tunnels, and of course, that is something, again, we believe that it's only... And, 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 and the observation that I can see from the past and from present and what no doubt is the future, they're only using this long-term ceasefire to rearm, regain the, the strength that they need in order to once again launch another campaign against Israel. In fact, amid the ceasefire agreement uh, late this evening in Israel, another rocket, a round of rockets and mortars were sent into Eshkelon and actually killed one and injured seven more. So it is obvious that the, uh, the Hamas leaders there do not care or will not ever agree in, in, in truth, truthfulness to a, a true and genuine ceasefire. Um, so anyway, that's just some of the, uh, the, the, the list there. Uh, another part of this article says, during the operation, fishing was canceled due to the security threats as Hamas terrorists made several attempts to infiltrate Israel by sea and have often tried to smuggle weapons into the Hamas strongholds under the guise of fishing vessels. Uh, now, something I think that's really important uh, for you guys to note, let me read to you just some of the other headlines uh, amid the ceasefire agreement. One of them is right here, a Hamas official uh, says, we will build our seaport without permission. They don't care if the Israelis have anything to say about it or not, they're gonna do it nonetheless. Um, uh, and, and then uh, MK Salah turned ceasefire into a long-term agreement. We have Brother Rick with us here from, from Texas. Uh, Rick is a former Navy SEAL, he has an extensive background in military. And uh, Brother Rick, uh, he, he's a believer in Yeshua as a Messiah and, and a precious brother and a friend. Uh, I wanted to talk to you, Brother Rick. We, we spoke a little bit earlier today about the events going on in Israel. And Brother Rick, I just want to get your input on it, you know, and you've got the floor and just kind of share what you're seeing. Uh, we know we have a ceasefire. Uh, and I don't know if you're aware of this or not, Brother Rick, but uh, in Eshkol today, uh, amid the ceasefire agreement already being pending there, they sent out another bunch of rockets and mortars and they killed one person there, injured seven more. And at the same time, they have a Hamas official amid the ceasefire agreement uh, declaring they're going to build a seaport without Israeli permission, etc. So what's your thoughts on all of this? Well, my thoughts on all of this. I did see that. Uh, I saw those news reports probably on the same news site on Israeli National News. And uh, look, Hamas is bound and determined what, to do what they want to do. Uh, I don't think the truce really matters. They've said it before. Any truce that they have is used to rebuild and uh, restock their weapons. So that's the purpose of the truce for them. I mean, we know that the Israelis are going into it with a Honestly, they would like to have a truce. I know they're tired of the rockets. They're tired of having their people run back and forth to the bomb shelters. They can't sleep at night. The kids can't go to school. So it's a, it's a, it's a mess over there. So I know that they would like to have peace, if 
nothing else. They would like to have peace. But my concerns, and I'm sure you, you share the same concerns, is that Hamas will use this to their advantage, and um, they're going to restock and rearm, and we know it's going to be coming into the seaports. I mean, remember, when they took when they took control of Gaza, when the Israelis gave Gaza to them, they left a tremendous amount of infrastructure. They didn't destroy everything. They left a lot of infrastructure, and the uh, Palestinians came in and destroyed everything. There was a huge agricultural business going uh, in that area. <clears throat> Some of the most advanced horticulture um, in the world that was coming out of that area, and now it's, it's gone. And they, they put uh, rocket launching sites on those, on those uh, agricultural areas. So they're going to restock and rearm. So the peace agreement really means nothing to them. I'm really concerned. I mean, it, it appears, let me say this before I go into it. The most important thing we should be thinking about when we think about the news in Israel is, is praying for them and praying yeah. for the leadership. It's, uh, it's real easy to look at it from thousands of miles away and, 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 and be at a, you know, it's like watching a football game. The coach is always wrong until he wins the Super Bowl. And uh, we have a tremendous leader over there leading the Israeli people, and I, and I think we need to pray for him. It, it's frustrating seeing some of the things go on. It seems as if they're not trying to win. They're just trying to get a status quo, and, and that's particularly frustrating. And I know it's frustrating for the people over there, but Amen. I think there's a lot of external pressure on them. You know, one thing, let me just kind of inject on that there, uh, Brother Rick, and uh, I, I have friends in the military over in Israel. I have uh, friends that are further up in that. I have friends in the government there in Israel, um, acquaintances in some cases there, but uh, it, there definitely is a lot of pressure, especially under uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, and my heart goes out to him. And, and uh I, I, I'm, I'm really at a loss for words in some cases. I know that uh, we are definitely going back very soon uh, in the next couple of months here. We were looking at the end of September, still may be going at the end of September. Uh, I'm just praying myself to see how the Lord leads. But one thing that is different in Israel now that we don't normally see when we have these skirmishes here, uh, I, I say skirmish, it was really an all-out war with uh, Hamas, but normally when you have even with a, with a war with Hamas, uh, life somewhat is going on normal in Jerusalem. Uh, it'd be normal up in Haifa, uh, it, with the exception now they have longer range rockets. But it's also the, the rioting, it is the protest uh, that, are under, being under, that are undergoing uh, from the uh, different Arabic communities there uh, by the Palestinians uh, that have just ransacked East Jerusalem. And I know that a lot of that's more under control right now, but the Temple Mount especially has really become extremely volatile at this point now. Uh, you can't go up there at all without thousands, thousands of Muslims, both young and old, used to, the, you know, the, the, the Israeli military when there was unrest, they would say if you're, you know, 40, uh, 45 and under, you couldn't come up uh, during this time. It doesn't matter the age anymore. Everyone is against the Jewish people being there. And even under heavy guarded escort, uh, you can't hear yourself think, talk, or anything. Uh, you're right, Brother Rick. Prayer is, is, is like an underscore at this point here. We desperately need the God of Israel to do something. We, we, we're believers in Yeshua as it is, but we need to see the God of Israel do something to, to, to rescue his people. And, and, and we'll be, I'm hoping that when we talk tomorrow to Sister Esther, our correspondent in, in the Golan there, uh, should mention to me, the believers there are calling on God to send the two witnesses. That in itself is beyond... Uh, it, it, it tells me the hour we're living in, Brother Rick. Go ahead. And that's, that's, a, that's a whole other subject. Before, before we, well, I, don't, I don't know if we want to touch on that, but before we would go there, uh, just the other day, there were uh, the, the, uh, the Islam, I'll call them the Islamists, were, were praying and they were chanting death to the Jews and smashed their heads on the Temple Mount and the ISIS flags were flown. This is in Jerusalem on the Temple Mount, the ISIS flags were flown. So that's a scary thing. And I mean, one, one of my prayers, one thing that I'm hoping Israel does, 
clearly they have military superiority over over the Palestinians. There's no doubt about that. Right. But they are under such scrutiny by the entire world. The anti-Semitism that's rising around the world, it's, it's, it's scary. Uh, even in countries like France, which is a fairly peaceful country, but it's, it's getting torn up. in saying that when you bring up Aiken and this is something uh, I'll definitely I'd love to have you back on in, in, in a talk program that we have here uh, as well like what we did with uh, Laurie and we'll actually air that tomorrow but uh, uh, on that issue alone Aiken if you think about it and we I know I can't get into it because I'm in the news progress right now but think about it it was a Babylonian garment and a gold wedge and what are the leaders doing right now? Just like Ezra, when he dealt with it, all those uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago, and the, 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 the chief leaders, the political leaders and the rabbis, uh, the chief of the rabbis had married into the Babylonian daughters, and we're seeing that Israel is dealing, they're, 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 they have, they've, taken the, they've taken a Babylonian garment and a, and a gold wedge in exchange for hopefully to get some peace, and it's not going to bring peace. It's not going to bring peace. And, and, and the other thing it is doing is distracting the world. If we Look what ISIS is doing. I mean, if you look at what they're doing in Iraq and Syria, our president has been wanting to go into Syria for years. And uh, fortunately or unfortunately, Putin really outsmarted him and made him look like an idiot when he got the Syrians to come to an agreement with their weapons, with their weapons of mass destruction, with their chemical weapons. And he outsmarted the president. So a lot of these ISIS fighters were trained with our help, okay, because they were rebels, they were Syrian rebels, and now they're marching through Iraq, and they're going into Syria, now we see on the news that President Obama is wanting to go, is considering going into Syria, so he is going to get his way, and we, he is going to end up going into Syria. We did very limited strikes, uh, airstrikes in Iraq to support the people, the, uh, the uh, Yazidis, very little, we did almost nothing, it was just a show. And his goal really is to go into Syria and destabilize that country. Assad's no great guy, but I think what's going to follow Assad is going to be worse. It's going to be a lot worse. We made a mess out of Egypt. We made a mess out of Libya. We made a mess out of Iraq. And this is, and this is what we're getting now. And they're going to march right into Syria. And I don't know what we're going to do, but I'm pretty sure that we're going to destabilize it even more. And ISIS will have a strong foothold there. And, um, it's a scary thought. Right now, they, the uh, ISIS claims to have uh, an American woman, and they're holding her hostage, and they exactly. want a $6 million ransom. So either way, ISIS wins. He's got, he's got the United States in checkmate. If, if we capitulate and we pay the money, we've now given them 6 or $6.5 million to buy weapons. If they kill her, okay, then it gets everyone riled up, and that's reason to go into Syria. So either way, Either way, they win. But this is how I feel about it. Look, either either our State Department and our and our and our foreign policy, the people are blinder than Mr. Magoo, or this is all planned. And I don't believe these are stupid people. They're not stupid people. No, they're not. All of this is happening for a reason. And I think this is their goal. We could have stopped ISIS in their tracks before they ever got started. Absolutely. But that wasn't their goal. And so that's why I believe that the attempt is to destabilize the area. Um, and we don't need to go down that road. But two other countries that I would keep an eye on is Pakistan, two, 
to our uh, number one, Pakistan. Uh, they're having some real problems, and they're a nuclear country. And um, that's a real concern. If uh, if the jihadists get the foothold in Pakistan in the government, then that's a real problem. Uh, the other country is Turkey. Now, Turkey's Turkey is a real interesting situation because they're a NATO member right now. So we have Israel as an ally, and Turkey as an ally as well, by the fact that they're a NATO country, okay? And they're in opposition. The, the, Turkish, the Turkish government is just, they're trying to instigate a fight with Israel. I mean, we'll see what happens with this flotilla as that develops, and I, and I just don't know. But they're trying to instigate. They're trying to pick a fight with the Israelis. And that's going to put the United States in a really interesting, I'm going to say awkward, awkward situation of who are they going to support? Are they going to support NATO? Or are they going to support Turkey? And the other interesting thing about Turkey is, Turkey now, uh, they, it doesn't appear that they want to join the EU. They want to go with the Russians, with BRICS countries, Brazil, wow. Russia, India, China, and South Africa, with that trade alliance. And so they would like to do that. And so whatever we do, I mean, this is where it's going to be interesting. You know, Putin's been really quiet, but one thing he is, I mean, He's a strategist. Putin's a very bright guy, and I think sometimes when he's negotiating with our president, our president is playing checkers, and he's playing chess, and we get killed every time. So, I mean, I can see a couple situations play out with Turkey where we're going to have big egg on our face, and um, the Israelis may suffer because of it. I, I couldn't so agree that, more. That concerns me. You know, and speaking of uh, Turkey there, there was, uh, there's uh, Brother Gary, who also uh, has a deep military background that's been on with us before. Uh, he, he, he actually contacted me at one point, and uh, of course, this was more of a, a, the spiritual application of it. He had seen in a dream uh, an F-14 uh, fighter that crashed onto the mountains during war games that Israelis were doing, and it just kind of blew him away. Well... Long and short of it, there. Came from where? Uh, I'm having a hard time hearing it. Well, it was actually an F-14 uh, fighter jet that he saw in a dream that crashed, and he said, "I, I get, He said, "Steve, are there really actually F-14s that are still flying around and doing a little bit of research?" Sure, there was. Turkey, believe it or not, actually still uses the F-14 as well as Syria. Uh, well, it did get the Israelis' attention, believe it or not. Somebody having a dream, it got their attention. They wanted to know more about what he saw in a dream. I mean, and, and, and so therefore, that is a noteworthy comment to say because when you get the government interested in knowing a person's dream because of certain things, of course, there were more things in there I won't mention here on the news, but, uh, but you know, they're, they're, and their concern was more with Syria than it was with Turkey. Uh, so, like you said, destabilizing these areas, it seems to be the current administration, that they, they, they have a... a a, a great knack for destabilize, destabilizing the Middle East as it is right now, and, uh, and and then leaving weapons behind for ISIS to be able to have right. toys to play with uh, to use against Israel, is it, it just seems to happen everywhere we go. Exactly, it, it's it's not just an accident. It can't be an accident. So it can be an accident once or twice, but not this many times in a row, and with so many countries in such a short period of time. And then look at what's happening over there. So. Absolutely. I, I just have a hard time believing that. Brother Rick, if I can get some final thoughts from you here, and, and we definitely sure. want to have you on again very in the very near future. Uh, we're just getting back into the news, uh, the aspect again. I was out for a couple of weeks, and uh, so we're going to do this nonstop now. We're, we've, we've made a plan and a commitment to stay live on the news and keep the news coming for the people to, to keep them up to date with what's going on in Israel uh, as it uh, affects the, the prophetic landscape. That's what our purpose is. And one last bit of news is before just before going off the air tonight, uh, the United States uh, warship had to fire a warning shot at an Iranian uh, ship that was approaching in the area uh, just recently reported on Israel's national news. Uh, we will be keeping you up to date as we see how this ceasefire plays out. Uh, tomorrow morning, we'll actually be speaking to uh, our correspondent, Sister Esther, over in Israel. She'll be in Jerusalem, and hopefully we can be bringing you up to date on some more interesting information coming out of Israel. Uh, pray for us. Uh, we do need your support. We are looking at going back to Israel very soon. 
uh, perhaps sooner than what we anticipate. Uh, if not, we may have to delay our trip uh, to some time in November. Anyway, God bless you. We love you. And Baruch Hashem. Shalom from Stephen Ben-Danun, Israeli News Live. Thank you.